Hi there, my name's Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and this video is sponsored by Audible. And, oh, would you look at that? It's Titan time! It is finally time to get some paint on this thing. In this video, I'm going to be painting the understructure of the massive torso and legs of the model. I'm doing this before I attach the dozens of armour panels because it would be really hard to paint underneath them, so we'll build up a realistic, ancient metal patina on the body underneath first. I want this paint job to strike a good balance between interesting enough to not look lazy and basic, and not so much effort that I cry myself to sleep when I eventually hide it with armour panels. It might seem like a pretty simple task, but I'll be laying the basics down on about three quarters of the Titan's total surface area in just this video. Probably about the same area as ten Land Raiders. Before we start painting, this is my last chance to add stuff to the base before it gets primed, so let's do just that. I snipped up some clock junk and cogs, and super glued them in place on the base, leaving some just laying on the ground, but making others look like they were half buried in the dirt. The crushed Tau hover tank was a really fun part to add, but looking at it now, it has a couple of areas that could do with a bit more detail. I stripped some old broken USB cables to get at the little cables they contain, twisted them together, and then shoved some in the gaps that were already there on the really broken sections of the hammerhead. On the section that connected to the anti-grav engine thing, I drilled out some holes to fit the cables, and then shoved little arrays of cables into the holes, letting them droop down all sad and limp. Also, fun hobby tip, when you snip them up into small lengths, old hairbands make great cables. Just add super glue to them to lock them in place, and they take paint really well and they have a cool rib texture straight away. The hover tank was a second hand model and I got a bit excited about stomping it and sticking it onto the base straight away, and I forgot to clean its mould lines, so I gave it a quick scrape on the most offending lines. If you remember from the video where I built the legs, the two bases just had some Geek Gaming Scenics modelling compound applied, which has a texture to it already if you don't smooth it out, but I needed to add some finer grit on there to sell the scale of this huge model. Vallejo Earth Texture should do the trick. I splotched it onto the ground, a bit on the industrial tiles, and brushed some onto the feet too. Ok, that should do it for the extra base details. Now it's time to say goodbye to Raw Resin Titan. I took it outside to prime. Both sections are enormous, so I had to be quite delicate with leaning it to get into all the right angles. For the first layer, I used plastic primer to make sure the subsequent layers of spray and paint stuck well to the surface of the model. I then used this matte brown from TT Combat's range of sprays. Also, I can't stress how important it is to wear a respirator, or at least a cloth mask when you're doing stuff like this. Aerosol paint is insanely bad for air quality, and it was a really still muggy day and the mist and smell just hung around the office for hours. You'll be happy to know that we shut Nessa in the other room so she didn't have to breathe the nasty stuff though. Ok, here comes a Prime Titan. I found the TT Combat Spray to be quite interesting. It applied really well and seems nice and solid. It's a great colour, but it was a bit shiny for regular use with models. It also imparted a very slight surface texture, which when you're working on a model this size is inconsequential, but you probably wouldn't want to use it on a regular sized miniature. This thing was huge and hard to rest at particular angles, so some parts didn't get sprayed very well. So Hattie recommended mixing Katachan Flesh and Mournfang Brown together to make a similar colour and then we manually base coated the parts that were still a bit grey. Not a bad colour match at all. Even though there were two of us working on this, it still took ages. This thing is enormous. The week before we shot this video, Team Midwinter Minis attended GriffCon, the first convention organised by Griffin Games and Harlow, and we had great fun. We met loads of cool people, Nessa met her hobby hero, and I also bought a few new paints that I reckon will get a fair bit of use on this project. Before we kicked off painting the Titan, I tested these new paints on a black and brown undercoat to see which combo I like best, sponging and painting to check texture and transparency. I reckon the warm toned one will work really well, and should contrast the cool toned armour panels nicely. It also has the most interesting mottled patina too. Hattie and I sponged the legs to test the new Vallejo gunmetal paint, and while it created a nice effect, I thought there was just way too much brown still showing. I needed a different approach, so I cracked out the giant body bronzer brush I used to dry brush my huge orc gargant, and did the same thing with the Warlord Titan. Yeah, that's much better coverage, less brown on show, and actually the mix of sponging and dry brushing has already created two different paint textures on the model. 
Next step in building up a realistic patina is adding a brighter metal colour, but not everywhere, dabbing it on with a stippling technique. If you've ever used a paintbrush to apply one of the liquidy texture paints like Typhus Corrosion, you'll know this is how the brush ends up. All the tiny texture particles get stuck near the ferrule and split the bristles in all directions like a feather duster. Useless for regular painting now, but amazing for stippling. Get a little bit of paint on your brush, dab off most of it, but not as much as if you were dry brushing, and then just tap against the surface, avoiding the recesses, and try to rotate the tip of the brush so you don't get repeat patterns. I actually found the new Vallejo Big Bottle Aluminium was too thin to get a good effect, too transparent, so I switched out to the Model Air version. And you'd think they'd be the same, but no, it's way more opaque. As you can see, already starting to build up a nice grimy metal look, but we're just getting started. Time to crack out my tub of forbidden peanut butter, aka my DIY dip wash that I've been using for years. I actually showed you how to make this stuff way back in 2018 even before my Blackstone Fortress series. It's a cool feeling that on my 164th video I'm still able to link back to stuff I did in my 4th video and it still be relevant. This nasty stuff is basically distilled water, acrylic ink, matte medium, PVA glue and dish soap. I've linked the video in the description if you want to get the exact recipe. It behaves a little differently from regular model wash like Nuln Oil or Agrax Earthshade, although now Games Workshop have reformulated their best-selling range of shades to do totally different things. It looks like Nuln Oil behaves differently from Nuln Oil now. <laughs> anyway, this stuff really wants to find the recesses, so I chose a huge brush and started slopping it on all over, starting at the top and painting towards the bottom to let the flow of the paint help me out. As you can see, it has a really grungy, grimy look to it. And also one of the benefits of working from a brown base coat, there are still some sections that haven't really had much attention from either the metallic or wash stages, but it doesn't look out of place. It adds to the effect, like their areas caked in battlefield dust or dirt. Before going on to the next painting step, it's time to let these legs dry and swap out to the torso and arms, and repeat all of our previous steps to get both sections to the same point. To prove our dedication to you and bringing you awesome hobby videos, we were slogging away filming this on the hottest day of the year, where it hit 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit for the first time in the UK. And keep in mind that fewer than 1% of UK homes have aircon. That's pretty rough. I mean, it's pushing 30 degrees in my office as I edit this video. And while you watch us literally melt while we rattle through the same stuff yet again, let me quickly tell you what audiobook we were listening to with this video sponsor, Audible. Now maybe it was the heat, maybe it was because I recently hosted him for a game of Warhammer 40k, but I chose Firmament, The Hidden Science of Weather, Climate Change and the Air That Surrounds Us by Dr. Simon Clark. Simon's a fascinating man, and knows so much about so many things, but he isn't preachy with it. The audiobook explains, in a friendly and accessible way, the history of climate and weather science, how historical breakthroughs happened, with fun analogies to help you wrap your head around some of the more complex stuff, so it sets the groundwork for all of the, yeah, but how do we know this questions you'll have when things get a bit more serious and topical. Simon also reads it himself, he's a fantastic narrator, and the key part, even though this is a legit science book, it's not boring, it was actually fun to listen to. Anyway, Firmament, very good, highly recommended, and a good choice considering, you know, all of this stuff. If you want to give it a listen, you can get a free credit and one month Audible Plus subscription on me, so you can enjoy the massive catalogue of included titles, as well as Audible exclusives, shows and podcasts. Just follow the links in the description, and that's audible.com slash midwinterminis, or text midwinterminis to 500500 to get sent all the stuff you need to get going. Right, let's put this bad boy to bed, let it dry overnight, and in the morning we'll carry on building up the patina. Well, I will anyway. Hattie had the day off, so I had the studio to myself. And it was still absolutely boiling, so I took the opportunity to do a little news anchoring. If you know what I mean. <laughs> We've got a nice texture build up now the wash has dried, and it's also muted the brightness of the metal paint. I do want to bring back a little shine though especially on the edges. So back to the aluminium paint and a mix of dry brushing corners and stippling here and there on the flat surfaces to build up even more patination. And while I had that paint out, I also painted the shafts of all the pistons on the model. You might think that pistons get all gross and greasy, and while the ends might, the actual shaft of the piston gets polished constantly by the movement and is really shiny. To add a bit of colour to the metal, 
First up, Reichland Flesh Shade. Applied sort of randomly, I let it drip and streak and pool in some areas too. I did the same again with Druchii Violet, kind of random, stipples and dabs here and there, and I did some streaking motions with the brush on large areas too. Purple washes can add a nice heat stress look to the metal. And finally, I used Nuln Oil Gloss to darken down the recesses on areas that looked a bit too dull and didn't have enough contrast. The gloss stuff reacts differently on flat surfaces and really tries to get into the recesses. The fact that it dries glossy is just a bonus when you're painting metallics. To clean it up a bit, I mixed up that brown base coat colour again and tidied up the bases, blocking in areas with the brown again that I'd caught with the silver dry brushing so it looked nice in the thumbnail. <laughs> and here it is! That's a pretty nice, simple and effective metal patina we've got. While you check out some of the tasty close-ups, let me quickly thank the channel's latest supporters on Patreon. Tim Garasimov, Adam Lee, Anti Kastropchin, Valdor, Steel Mantle, Gabriel Ambrosiak, Emperor's Champion Ulricus, Hawak, Vermin, Christoph Inks, and Martin Kruthov. So what do we still have to do on the understructure? It would be cool to add sections of extra weathering, maybe using the Dirty Down Rust or Verdigris stuff. We'll also need to paint all of the power conduits and pipes, as well as the ribbed cables. That has good potential for adding a bit of colour to the model. Maybe some reds or yellows. Hazard stripes, maybe. Obviously, the massive plasma coils on the big gun will need to be energised. I think I'll follow Steve's Little Plastic People guide for that one. His knight's plasma weapons look so, so cool in the flesh. Also, once the armour panels are on, we can add little nicks and scrapes in the metallic understructure too, as there's no point in doing those on areas that are going to be covered in armour panels. There's also a few lenses to paint too. And then we'll be ready to apply those huge sections of armour, so we'll have to think about getting serious with those soon too, huh? Speaking of which, I asked Steve to paint a test panel to see how he'd do it differently from me, and oh my shit. This guy's a wizard, honestly. No airbrushing apparently, mostly sponging. His technique uses directional highlights on the panels, so I'll need to figure out which way is up on all the panels before they get painted. I also asked Steel Harpy Gaming if they can cut some custom flexible stencils for my Titan. I reckon it would be awesome to get some white snowflake designs to really pop on those black armour panels. And that, my friend, is it for now. I'm slowly melting in my editing room, so I'll make this brief. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to grab your free trial of Audible on me with a link in the video description, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.